What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Not For The Weak Of Heart. I've seen a couple people say that humans don't go to hell, but instead, hell is only for the devil and his angels. I think that this is an interesting idea, so I'd like to pose a question. Do humans go to hell? Now let's start with the verse that I've seen quoted as a basis for this point of view. And it and when they quote it, they only quote part of it. They say, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Now the problem with stating this verse as a foundation for the idea that humans don't go to hell is that they ignore the beginning of this verse. So let's just go ahead and read the full verse in its entirety. Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The beginning of this verse directly says that humans who do not give to others will perish in the flames of hell. How can we be sure? Well, let's back up a bit and start at verse 31. So just just stay with me. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was, str- I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you and th- or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's our verse right there. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. According to Jesus, if we don't do what we are supposed to do, then we don't have inheritance in eternal life. Instead, we are thrown into the lake of fire, that eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. If we don't do what we're supposed to do, we're thrown into hell. Another verse I've seen quoted is, Death and Hades are thrown into the lake of fire. Once again, this is true, but... As with the verse above, Matthew 25, verse 41, this verse isn't quoted in its entirety. This verse is found in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Now, the problem with just quoting this verse and using it as a foundation for the premise, no humans go to hell, is that this verse is about humans going to hell. Why? The reason death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire is because their inhabitants were emptied out before the great white throne to be judged. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each of them, according to what they have done. That's why death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Because they gave up their dead to be judged and there was no longer any use for them. Because on the new earth there is no more death. Let's keep let's let's keep going though. Verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So to use this as a foundational argument for humans do not go to hell, it's not very sturdy of an argument. And it easily crumbles because the verse above and the verse beneath both contradict that premise. But let's keep going. Let's let's look at uh, let, let's look at other verses. Now, I've seen this used in favor of 
of the premise as well. I've seen 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, coupled with 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. So let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And then 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. And which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, the problem with stating these two as foundations for this premise is that there really isn't an argument here. In fact, it's an anti-argument. If you state that there can't be any humans thrown into hell because the last enemy to be destroyed is death, then you've now created a contradiction because the two verses aren't talking about death being thrown into the lake of fire, but instead it's talking that it's saying that death is now defeated because Jesus rose from the grave with the keys to death and Hades. Revelation 1 17 through 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forever, and I have the keys of death and Hades. So once again, this isn't a viable argument for this, pre this premise. So then if the Bible says that people will go to hell, who goes to hell then? Well, I think Paul sums it up quite well in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9-10. through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God, as well as Galatians chapter 5, verse 19-24. through 24. Because Paul gives us both what is needed what we have to do to strive towards what what we should be striving towards to inherit inherit the kingdom of God and what we should avoid to inherit the kingdom of God it says now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalries dissensions divisions envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I have warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. For more on who goes to hell, check out our video, why would a loving God send people to hell, which is under our not for the weak of heart category. So let's just sum everything up for you guys real quick. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, and God never intended for humans to go to hell. But because man chose the devil and his ways over God and his ways, man is sentenced to hell with his master because man cannot serve two masters. So either you serve God or you serve the devil. Either you serve God or you serve sin. Sin leads to death, which is hell. God, or righteousness, leads to heaven, which is life, right? So death and Hades are also thrown into hell, and death was the last enemy to be defeated, which Jesus conquered on the cross when he gave his life and then rose again three days later. Those who strive for righteousness inherit eternal life with God, and those who strive for unrighteousness inherit eternal death away from God. I hope this all made sense and that it answered all your questions about whether or not people go to hell. But if you, you know you feel that maybe we didn't answer everything as well as we could have, maybe you feel we left some things out, let us know in the comment section below. But if you feel that you know, we did a good job and you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.